The Aristocats was released in 1970 and was directed by Wolfgang Reitherman and is the 20th animated feature film by Walt Disney Animation Studios. The film follows a family of Parisian felines set to inherit a fortune from their owner as they try to make their way back home after a jealous butler kidnaps them and leaves them in the country. Guys, I'm excited to talk about this movie because this is not a film that I grew up with. It's a film that I've only started watching more recently when I did my initial watch through of all of the Disney animated movies a few years back. And every time I have watched it, I have grown to enjoy this more and more. The first time I watched this, I wasn't that big of a fan of it. I thought it was okay at best, but as I continue watching it, it gets funnier, it gets more fun, and it becomes a really good light spot in the transitional era of this time period. And yes, I'm using the word transitional era instead of the dark age because we are now deep into the dark age of Disney, or what is considered the dark age of Disney by many scholars and many fans of the Disney brand. But for right now, I am going to be using the transitional era, which was, as far as I know, first coined by the YouTuber Joe the Disney Guy, and I got this from him. He puts this era of Disney, calling it the transitional era, because it's less derogatory towards the quality and more about how they transitioned from no longer having Walt Disney at the forefront of the studio after his passing and how they moved onward from that. So that's what I'm going to be calling it for the foreseeable future. But yeah, Aristocats is a really fun movie to start off this era. It was one of the last movies that Walt Disney fully approved of before it went into production and was again directed once again by Wolfgang Reitherman who would direct plenty of the films starting with what was it, uh, Sword of the Stone, and then going all the way into uh, Robin Hood. And right off the bat, you can tell with this film that it is much like the films that we've been talking about previously, such as 101 Dalmatians, The Sword in the Stone, and The Jungle Book, but I think even more so. And I'm talking about the animation in particular, which uses the same Xerox processing as those films. And right here in particular, when I was watching this film, you could really notice it more so than the others. Everything is just really scratchy. Um, every time a character moved, you could see the lines just kind of flicker around, um, especially with the uh, old lady's hair in particular. It just kept moving and it felt weird and textured in a very strange way. And some of that animation is really cool to see, seeing all the line work, but at the same time, it's kind of distracting, especially when you put it on a big screen, which I have a pretty large TV, and it was very strange watching this unfold on the screen. So it's both a double-edged sword. On one hand, it looks really cool. You get to see the animation process in a brand new way, and then on the other side of things, it's kind of distracting. But The Aristocats, when it was released, was a pretty moderate success. It did really well in theaters at the time, and critics also seemed to enjoy it quite a bit. They found it to be lighthearted fun. Um, it had just a lot of humor to it that people really enjoyed, and it wasn't overly serious. It just knew how to have fun. But that was also some of the criticism, that it just didn't hit the same way that some of Disney's better films did. And over the years, I think it has kind of gone in between being this underrated kind of film and then also just a film that people just don't think about a lot. I more or less think of this movie as a mix of Lady and the Tramp and 101 Dalmatians mixed with cats instead of dogs. Uh, you do that switch and I think you get 
for the most part, what is The Aristocats, which is a really fun film that has a lot of influence with jazz in particular. The soundtrack for this movie is amazing. All of the songs from the opening theme to the Do Re Mi song with the cats um, as they're kind of playing the piano, that is incredible, but also the best song in the film and the most controversial part of the film is Everybody Wants to Be a Cat. That song is so catchy. It's so enthralling to watch and the animation is just incredible. The use of color in that scene in particular because the rest of the film is pretty standard fare. It looks like a standard animated film from this era. But then that part is so colorful and so filled with life. And then it has moments of a Asian stereotype cat saying some pretty racist things about fortune cookies, showing his teeth, and it's really, really uncomfortable. So I understand why on Disney Plus that this has a warning before you watch the movie, because this is probably the most egregious racism that I have seen in an animated Disney film at this point. It's just so blatantly terrible. But at the same time, it's the most entertaining moment of the film. So that is very difficult to think about. So when you watch this film, you have to understand that this is not okay at this time. And you can still enjoy it, but you need to understand why this is not okay. But other than that, the movie doesn't really have much in the way of problems other than I think the animation and the story itself being pretty standard. I did see some criticisms from people talking about how the movie is rather episodic, but after watching and reviewing a ton of these Disney movies, most of them are very episodic. And I think this one has more of a through line story from beginning to end. And you go along the way and meet some very intriguing and fun characters, such as Napoleon and Lafayette and Thomas O'Malley, who is just a fantastic and fun character. But everybody is very likable in this film. I had this fear that the kids, the kittens in the film, would be really annoying, but they're not. They're all really likable. And honestly, my favorite character in the entire film is the butler. Uh, he's more or less our villain, but he doesn't do too much throughout the majority of the film, except for at the very beginning when he catnaps them and takes them out into the country to basically leave them for dead. Um, this is such a fun villain because he's just kind of a mess. He is kind of wimpy in a lot of ways, and he's just not your typical villain, which makes him maybe not the most memorable of Disney villains, but one that's a little different than what we've come before. We've just gotten so used to having these just complete forces of evil, and this is a guy that just wants to get some kind of inheritance from this old lady, and I find that kind of fun to watch. The humor in this is really good. I found myself laughing quite a bit throughout it. Um, that was really enjoyable to watch. And it just is a movie that you can easily put on, sit down, and have a fun time. It's very quick and breezy, which um, in comparison to, say, something like The Jungle Book, which at moments can be rather boring, I think. I think this one just has so much energy in it that it's just really fun to experience with everybody. My girlfriend really enjoys this film. She says she grew up with it, and she really enjoyed watching this too. So it, it's something that I think a lot of people can enjoy, and I think it needs to be talked about a little bit more. Um, because it's not one of the best Disney animated films, 
but it's one that we can sit down and have a fun time with. And sometimes those are some of the best Disney movies to watch. Something that you can just sit down, you know, you're, you're just having an off day. Just put on the Aristocats and you will probably have a really good time. So yeah, the animation is, again, it's scratchy. I do like the Xerox processing in a lot of ways, but it does feel really scratchy here. It's very obvious, and I think in some ways it can hurt the film, but if you're interested in how this processing works and interested in looking at animation, I think this is a great example to look at of how the sketches just end up on the animation cells. I think that is really cool. Uh, the music, the jazz music in particular, is fantastic. This is one of my favorite Disney animated soundtracks, really. Everything in it is just really memorable. And it just has such likable characters from our heroes to our villain. And that's a really good feat for a Disney movie to pull off, I think. So, yeah, this is a really solid film. It's not perfect, but it doesn't really have to be. It's just light-hearted fun. So with all that said, I'm gonna give The Aristocats a 7 out of 10. I really wholeheartedly recommend this film to anybody that just wants to watch a really light-hearted Disney film. It's a lot of fun, I think. Kids will enjoy it, adults will as too. It's just got a lot of really good humor, and I'm excited to continue on with the next Disney animated film, Robin Hood, after this, but that will be near the end of this month. But I want to thank you all once again for watching this, and as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel, and stay positive.